Sonic, the heart of your system. If you follow us, you probably noticed by now we do some pretty out there builds, which are often high spec and in very large cases. With plenty of comments from you guys requesting an SFF build, I finally decided to plan out and create my very first liquid cooled small form factor build, and what a beauty she is. I'll show you more on the completed project a little later but first I wanted to go over the key components to this small form factor system. There's no doubt the case is really the defining factor to this type of build. There's a whole new world out there when it comes to mini ITX cases and much much more than what you can find at places like PC Case Gear and Newegg. Just taking a look at the SFF PC subreddit will really open your eyes to this ever expanding community. So first off the chassis I chose for this build is the Sun Milo T03. Definitely not the easiest chassis to find, but after seeing this in person from a friend's build, I decided to go down the path of purchasing one myself. These can be picked up from Taobao, or you can use Superbuy, which is an online shopping agent. Site navigation can be tricky, and I definitely recommend clicking the online consultation button for some extra help. The chassis takes a month or so to arrive, and you can choose your color options and chassis patterns, as I believe these are made to order. I went with the stock design with a clear anodized finish. You can get other customized designs like a ROG front and so on. Just make sure you do select the option, which includes the riser cable, as it is really designed for this type of case. The case is all aluminum, comes in at 10 liters in volume, and will set you back about 250 Australian dollars or 160 US dollars, including shipping. If you do pick up a chassis like this, I highly recommend waiting for the case to arrive before picking up any other components. CPU, memory and storage are fine, but radiators, GPU and blocks will really be defined once you start measuring. Two main components that made this build work for me in this chassis was the GPU block and the radiator. With any two-sided case, when you water cool it, you eventually need to feed your tubing from one side to the other. Not once, but twice. Going with the AlphaCool Nexus ST30 X-Flow 240mm radiator was a major decision for this build. Normally radiators have a set of ports at one end. In a chassis like this, going with the typical radiator would spit both ports out towards the front of the chassis or both at the back of the chassis and this just wouldn't work. Now with X-Flow or Cross-Flow radiators, you have ports diagonally, one at each end. This meant I could feed into the radiator at one corner of the case and it would spit out diagonally at the other corner basically exactly where I needed it to go. Then with the slight gap under the motherboard was my return line back to the other side. For general radiator support in the Sun Milo T03, you're looking at a maximum of 30 millimeters thick with standard fans. There is a fraction more room, but once the GPU riser cable runs over and GPU power cables are connected, it starts to get tight. Also in regards to this radiator, there are four G quarter ports. One set in the opposing corner, but they are on each side of the radiator. This meant I could fill the system straight from the top. Unscrew the chassis cover panel, and I had direct access to two fill ports, although some light filing was required. The second main component was the GPU block. I've used these before, and while working with them previously, I thought how about using them in an SFF build. This is the BitsPower lateral GPU block, and will fit a 2060, 2070, 2080, and a 2080 Ti reference card, including super variants. It also fits the Quadro RTX 8000. The main difference with this block, and which you can probably notice, is the terminal location, or lack of. Ports are at the very end of the card, instead of on the main edge of a card seen on traditional blocks. This makes for an extremely low profile card for tight spaces. Although this does bump out the length of the card, but in a chassis like this, this wasn't an issue. If I did go with a traditional block with terminals on the side, you can see things start to get tight, then right angle fittings need to be added, which bulks out this area even more. And you can see with a traditional block, 
tubing runs need to run to the center of the chassis, whereas with the X-Flow radiator paired with the lateral block, both ports are grouped together. The last main part I want to cover are the pumps. One of the biggest issues going with an SFF water-cooled system is choosing and fitting a pump. A traditional D5 or DDC with the top is not going to fit in a case like this. One route to go down is a CPU block with a built-in pump. Swiftec have had one for a long time, but is very rare. Barrow have just released a nice looking CPU block pump unit, but I had already started this build before that one came out. The option I went with were two Alphacool DC LT 3600 pumps. I do recommend going with the 2600 RPM ones as they are much quieter, but for me at the time, they had no stock. The 3600 RPM are fine, but run hellish and loud and will require DC control and turning down to about 50% speed. To get the pumps all up and working, you're going to need some sort of pump top. The Alphacool Deck DC LT Dual Plexi top is what I went for and I must admit the online photos just don't do it justice. In this build, it just looks so good. This pump top has a plethora of ports, three in on one side and three out on the other side, which made insulation for this setup very easy. Four pin RGB does come with this top, but for my build, I actually removed this strip. Now, before I go over all the temperatures of the build, there's quite a few. I've done it with the side panel on, side panels off, uh, stock temperatures and overclock temperatures. I do wanna go through some of the benchmarks. Now, for some of you, the results might be a bit underwhelming, mainly because I did this last year, uh, well before the 30 series cards were out. So it does run a 2080 Super, and it's also running an i5 10600K. It's not the highest end hardware, but in saying that, for a system like this, I probably wouldn't want to throw in a 30 series card and water cool it. I just feel that the 240 radiator I used wouldn't be able to handle the CPU and a GPU together unless you severely undervolt it and I probably wouldn't want to do that on a 30 series GPU. So let's jump in and check out the benchmarks. So that's the benchmarks out of the way. Now, first off, I do want to apologize for taking so long to bring this video out. So this is the part two of the two-part series that I had on this SFF build. So I've done the time-lapse before, and I said I was going to do a part two, so here it is here. Uh, it did take a while, mainly because there's a lot of gear that came out towards the end of last year, a lot of cases that had uh, deadlines to be met, so I had to focus on, on those first, whereas this is just sort of a project I did by myself, which I wanted to sort of bring to you guys and evolve more into the SFF market uh, for these builds. So jumping straight into temperatures, now I have done stock, and I have done OC. I'm gonna quickly throw the overclocked uh, temperatures up. So that's where I had a five, all core or five gigahertz. I'm not gonna go through each one of these because I found that the uh, overclocked results, uh, that was just a CPU only, didn't really increase that much uh, performance wise over running the stock turbo. So with the extra heat increase, I'm not really gonna go through each of those and I didn't think it was worth it as to running stock. So I run this system completely stock. I've been using this heat, so I've been taking it to a mate's place to game on. I do use a uh, 1080p monitor, which is 240 hertz and it does very, very well in that in competitive games. Some of your more AAA games, it won't reach that, but it still does pretty decent, except for, especially with that 2080 Super. Now moving on to temperatures, now room temp was 24 degrees, so a little bit warm. And then that's just with the fans on sort of default, uh, default PWM and mode. Uh, they weren't going flat out because it wasn't really reaching those super high temperatures and it wasn't completely silent either. And I do have the pumps running a little bit when I say a little bit, I will say uh, probably half speed because these are the DCLT 3600s, uh, not the 2600s, they're the quieter ones. The 2600s are very, very hard to find in stocker places. So I've gone with the 236s, but I am running them half speed and they are very, very noisy at 100%. I'll quickly throw some footage of these pumps that at, when the system starts, they're at full speed and then they clock down to 50. So let's check out that.
So yeah, as you can see, definitely when the system starts full speed, they are very, very noisy. Uh, you may find that a lot of motherboards, the BIOS can't go below 60% for controlling your fans. Uh, especially these, I couldn't go below. So I had to install the ASRock software and then that allows me to go as low as I can. And I found at 60%, the pumps were still a little bit too noisy. As soon as I went down to 50 around that, mar that mark, it was pretty much silent. And as you heard, you really can't hear the pumps. So moving back into the temperatures, I got a bit sidetracked there. Uh, so I did it with, uh, it's quite a lot here. I've done Cinebench R20, uh, Metro Exodus, which is kind of quite beefy these days on CPU and GPU. I've done A A64, the FPU, and 3D Mark Time Spy. So I'll start at the top and move down. So the first two ones are CPU with side panel off and then on. And then the next two are the side panels off and on for GPU uh, for each one. Now starting with Cinebench R20, now these are stock, uh, stock uh, system settings. For the side panels off for the CPU, you're looking at 71 degrees versus 74 degrees with the side panel on. And as for the GPU, uh, it's not really doing too much. So GPU is just heating up because of the water temp. So we had side panels off was 36 and then side panels on was 38. And that was for Cinebench for the R25 minute run. Metro uh, Exodus for the side panels off for the CPU, you're looking at 68 and then side panels on, you're looking at about 70 for the CPU. Then for GPU, side panels off, it was 50 and then side panels on was 50. So really no change there for the GPU with the side panels off or on. Moving on to the A to 64 FPU. Now this is quite intensive. Uh, this always sort of tops the charts when I'm doing temperature testing. The side panels off the CPU was 76 and then side panels on were 78. And then for the GPU, side panels off was 35 and then side panels on for the GPU were 37. Once again, it's not really doing much of for the GPU. It's just gonna be slightly warmer because of the water temp. Now 3D Mark Time Spy with the side panels off the CPU, you're looking at 71 and then side panels on for CPU, you're looking at 73. And then for the GPU, side panels off, you're looking at 50 and then side panels on for the GPU, you're looking at 52. So basically the difference there between side panels on and side panels off was anywhere between two to four degrees, which wasn't too bad. Personally, I've just been leaving the side panels off. I think it's easier. Um, it's better to see inside. It does make it a little bit lighter. And for me, I live in a pretty good dust-free environment, so I don't really have to concern about getting dust everywhere in the system. Uh, moving on to some other things I wanna cover that people mentioned. The filling of the system was very, very easy because I mentioned earlier the, radi the radiator used is the X flow or cross flow, and it's got ports on both the bottom on the diagonal and then on the top. So I could simply screw in a, a cylinder res up here, and then I could just fill it up with coolant, uh, rock the system about and let it drain directly in. Whereas in a normal traditional radiator, you wouldn't have these top ports. You'd have to try and like add in like a T piece or something to try and fill it somewhere else. So that came in very, very handy. The screen I used was an 8.8 .8 inch. It's 1920 by 480. So 1920 this way, 480 this way. And that is from AliExpress. And that's a really nice little screen using the A to 64 custom panel I've made. And I've kind of um, advanced this sensor panel I've made since I did the first video. I've added a heap of features here. I've got things like disc read and write, uh, my NVMe temp. I've also got my FPS, the time. I've got things like the, the monitor hertz. So at the moment it's 60 because it's picking up this one. When I have my 240 hertz gaming monitor in, I set it to that one. And then I just know that my screen is always running at its maximum refresh. Uh, memory utilization, the LAN it's connected on, and then you're down and up for that LAN, and then your basic uh, CPU temp, uh, CPU load, CPU clock, GPU temp, and then the uh, GPU clock as well. So very, very handy, the amount of stuff you can put on there. And also people wondering what this thing was here. I'm, I'm not sure the sort of the feedback on this. Uh, I don't mind it. I think some people liked it. This is just a, uh, it's kind of like a drawer handle, but I found these on AliExpress again. I ordered a bunch of sizes, so I got short ones, long, one, long ones, and I just thought of throwing this on top. I did have to drill through, got some countersunk screws at each end, and I just thought it'd be cool to carry it around, and it is made out of aluminum, so it is very, very solid. And I do think it comes in handy. Now that's basically it for my venture into the SFF build for this one. Now I've had a lot of positive feedback, so I've decided to do some more upcoming small form factor builds. I've got one coming up in the Meshlicious chassis. That one you might be seeing it around. It's got a lot of mesh side panels, hence the name. It's got one glass side panel, and I will be doing a CPU only loop in that one as I am using a 3090. I wouldn't bother uh, trying to water cool a 3090 and a CPU in a case that can only hold a 240. And then I've also got a Ghost S1 build. I will be doing a top hat, a bottom hat, 
in that one, and that will be water cooling the GPU and the CPU as well, because I can fit two 240 radiators in that one. So make sure you stay tuned for those which will be coming up. But yeah, that's it on this sort of venture into this FFF project. I am keen to do more. I wanna thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.